Good afternoon, my name is Dr. Kevin Basrelian. I'm a urologist, and we're here embarrassing questions about your prostate exam. So we're gonna start off with the first question and see what we have. Well, it says, what can be done to manage incontinence? Incontinence means not continent. That means loss of urine or involuntary loss of urine. So incontinence in urology can be happening in males or females. It could be from long-term medical problems, physical problems in women, and it can be from surgical problems in both males and females. There's urge incontinence, which has the urge to get to the bathroom and you can't make it. Then there's stress incontinence, which means you have a cough, a sneeze, you sit down. Uh, that can cause a squirt of urine, which is incontinence. Uh, and then there's total incontinence, or a mixture of the both. So the way we treat it, it depends on the cause. So after an evaluation, to determine the exact cause as best we can, then we can do a lot of different things. You can treat it with a surgical procedure. You can treat it to elevate the floor of the bladder at the junction of the floor and the urethra. The urethra is the short tube in a woman that exits the urine in a male. It's much longer despite the fact they have a penis. It's still uh, in uh, urethra. So you can treat it surgically. You can treat it with medicines. And we have an algorithm, uh, in other words, we have a plan. So someone comes in, they say, well, I have urgency and I have to run to the bathroom. Well, you can treat it, one, with behavioral modification. You can learn how to best control your bladder. You can ch stop your fluids. You can make sure before you go on a long trip, you don't drink two cups of water and a glass of oranges and get in the car and drive to the casinos. No, you don't do that. You wait till you're halfway there to start drinking your coffee. So you can control by behavioral modification. Then you have sacral stimulation, which is the way we stimulate the sacral nerves. Believe it or not, they're in the ankle area. And that can control the bladder to help you control your pelvic floor muscles. Or we have surgical techniques. So they're all, all different variations depending on the degree, uh, the cause, and if it's male or female. That was a good question, by the way. Next one. How common is urinary incontinence after prostate cancer treatment? The short answer is three to eight percent of men, three to eight, not 38, three to eight percent of men have some form of leakage of urine after a radical prostatectomy, whether it's robotic or with an incision. And that means they could lose some when they cough or sneeze, or they can drip a little bit. Uh, for the non cancerous treatments of prostate cancer, the levels are much lower. And of course, it depends on the skill uh, of the practitioner but, or the type of surgery that's done. If you're doing a focal therapy for prostate cancer, it's a very low rate, less than 1%, 2%. If you're doing a scraping of the prostate or other larger procedures to open the channel, uh, then you can go anywhere from you know, two to five percent. So there's different degrees of it. And going back to the question, how common is it? Somewhere between three to eight percent overall. Okay? So it shouldn't stop you from having surgery if you need surgery for one of the absolute reasons to have surgery for prostate, including cancer. Is it normal to get an erection during a prostate exam. I presume you're asking that of the person getting the exam. So, no, it's not normal. It happens very uncommon. I've been practicing for many decades and I can think of one time it happened. So, um, there are nerves in the area of the rectum, the self, not the prostate, that can intensify ejaculation and erections, uh, but not during an exam. Shouldn't be doing that. Shouldn't happen, could it? Yeah, of course it could.